affordable space adventures, Kyle. Yeah. What, what was it about affordable space adventures that grabbed you? This is a Wii U exclusive game. And you oh, might so that's think it. like you're done. Yeah. Oh, I love my Wii U. <laughs> no, uh, what is cool about this is that it uses the gamepad. This would be a hard game to port because uh, you're controlling a spaceship. You're on an, an affordable space adventure. Uh, and the spaceship, the, the control panel does lots of interesting things. You control like how much thrust you have or which engine you're turning on, whether it's your gas or your electric engine. And so you're like adjusting these things. So there's a lot of this, a lot of looking there's up There's absolutely down a lot of okay. that. Yeah, and so, I mean, I think when the gamepad was initially announced, this is sort of what I was imagining is like, you know, being in a spaceship and being able to control lots of different things. And so it's interesting to finally have a game that does that. Any co-op opportunity there? We're like... Oh, it's insane, yes. One person, okay, can control it. Yeah, one person can, right, be the person controlling the ship and the other person, uh, you know, controlling these meters and then another person controlling which way the flashlight turns. You can have three people controlling the ship at once. Oh, cool. I Not would, all on the gamepad, though, because only one gamepad works on the system. Mm -hmm. So it would right. be a, uh, two pros in a gamepad, or uh, you can actually use a Wii remote. I would. You just played by your lonesome. Where it gets... <laughs> Which is as affordable as you can get. Yeah, I'm lonesome. <laughs> where it gets We is, didn't have the budget for more people in this just played. I'm sorry, Kyle. It gets to a point where you're dropping... Uh, what will happen is there's, other, there's an alien race on this planet. Okay. Uh, they have sensors, and they can sense... Like, let's say they're sensing heat. So then you're like, okay, I'll use my electric engine. But the person right after that uh, senses electricity. So like, you'll have points where you have to go through here really, very slowly, try not to make too much noise. They'll sense noise as well. Uh, and then cut your engine so you're not making too much heat. And then you'll like drop, and then you'll have to like turn it on once you're outside of their radius. And so you're doing moves that I don't trust my fr I don't trust my friends to do those. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm very happy to control all three of these things at once. And it was uh, something that would be more fun, easier, more accessible if you had more friends, but is manageable by yourself. I think like, it'd be harder not... with friends. Okay. I think this game would be harder with friends. Friends would just yeah. mess the whole thing You have to be so coordinated, yeah. It'd be like, all right, Jake, cut the engine. Cutting engine. Now <laughs> thrusters up, Jake. Thrusters up, Jake. And then we die, and I'm mad at Jake, you know? So it's like, don't even... I don't that know. That way you don't can... play with Jake anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like that friendship wasn't working <laughs> That's for That's why now. no one's ever seen Jake, yeah. Uh, Sounds like you have less like a friend problem, more like a Jake problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. probably Jake. Uh, so it's cool. It's it's puzzles. I think each level is essentially a puzzle. And I mean, yeah, it's hard to pull off. But uh, yeah, I was also thinking Metroidvania when I was watching trailers and things like that. It's not that at all. It is very linear. There's not even like secret things to find. It's kind of just here's your here's your problem. Solve it. And it's a cheeky game. I mean, like the whole title, Affordable Space Adventures, kind of mm -hmm. like I don't know, like it. it it is beckoning you to explore, but at the same time, kind of like, you know, we can't give you a nice ship. It's not like Samus Aran where you can have your awesome armor and all these weapons and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you, like no alien came by and sucked all your abilities away or, you know, threw you in some prison or something like that. You just, you're just getting by on whatever space budget you have. Yeah. Well, actually, what's, it's really kind of interesting the way they, they do it is uh, your operating system crashes and the way that you get more powers back is just uh, there's a priority list. And so the operating system will, of course, get your gas engine first and uh, your heat sink thing last. And so, like, it, so is there like a predictable level of progression, or can you kind of like work around it if you want to choose to focus on one thing? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that operating system as it as it okay. like remembers everything, which I think is kind of cool way of handling that. But yeah, the, the cheekiness is really great. You'll unlock cutscenes between levels, and mm. so like one of them is like an advertisement from the chief security officer and like she's like she's there like if you're ever having a problem call me but that never happens so I'm on vacation look at me here <laughs> and like that's it's very funny the tone is really great for those cutscenes and uh, basically you're it's fun you're in this world where nothing has ever gone wrong and something has gone wrong and uh, so fix that so you're exploring this place for the first time yes okay but like this business is it's the business of letting normal people like you and I just explore a planet Nothing ever goes wrong, and this is like, what if something goes wrong? It's a, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's a cool Wii U game that costs. 
I think it cost twenty dollars. Ooh. Oh, I know. This is. <laughs> yeah. That seems a little pricey. I mean, the game doesn't look terrible. Like the the lighting uh, of what I saw, the lighting. Um, yeah. Was pretty cool. It was kind of fun to explore. Like a lot of like dark, creepy environments, and uh, in the trailer they had some fun enemies. Like you were saying, like the, you, the, he was setting off alarms and yeah. so lots of like scary stuff cool. was happening. Right. Any any surprises? Any like did you jump at all? Like any any startling moments, or was it did it get predictable? The surprises are. Uh, oh gosh, like the things that your ship is capable of. So when I say like cutting the engine, uh, there's some really fun stuff with, probably I would say once you get your landing gear, you have different kinds of landing gear. And uh, just the actions, the different stuff you have to balance and turn off and turn on uh, to just get through an area can be very, very interesting and fun. Is the, are the buttons on the gamepad set? So like the, like the button for this landing gear is always going to be over here or can you like mm -hmm. move it over? Because you're like, I, I, I like to use that more. Can, can you finesse the game at all? Like, you're literally, like, completely at the whims of the game's puzzles. Or can you, like, I'm going to use this landing gear this time. Oh. I'm already acting like you, Kyle. Let's see. It, it, yeah, it, it, I know. It wears off. <laughs> I think there's only one. There's us, it seems there's usually only one way to solve a puzzle. Okay. Um, and you don't know how much, how much more you have left in the game? I don't. No, I don't know. It could be. You could come back. We, we, we could maybe need to do another Just Play because you come back next week and you're like, there were 20 more hours of this game. I didn't even know that. Can I tell you something? I don't want 20 more hours. Okay. Because uh, what I do like is the progression so far. You get a new thing and then you have that and then you implement that and then that's that. I, I suspect there's probably one or two more hours where now that I have everything, it's not just use that thing, it's use all of these things. I don't know if I told you this, Kyle, but I have a Wii U now. Mm -hmm. uh, how is $20 as far as games are concerned in the, in the, in the, in the eShop? Uh, how is that? About, is that about ballpark? I don't know, man. When Mario sixty four is ten dollars, what do you like? What do you? But they didn't do anything. Nobody really did anything this year that was backbreaking to bring Mario sixty four. You know, like that. That that wasn't really time intensive, as far as I understand. You know, right. to to bring that. So I think that's that's where that the double the price comes from. Right. Yeah. If, you're right. It is very nice that two developers were willing to come together to make a Wii U game that utilizes the Wii U. That is very interesting. Does it feel like a game that somebody like had the Wii gamepad in their hands and was like, yes, let's do something specifically for this, or maybe they were developing a PC game and then were like, oh, this could possibly work on the gamepad. I think this, I think this idea spawned with the Wii U. Oh, okay. So you couldn't like put the control pad on like the right side of the screen or something and I could click on stuff as I'm going through with the keyboard? It'd be tricky, it would just be hard. It would be hard to pull off. Um, it's not hard to like look like totally taking your eyes off the screen and go. Oh down, yeah, like, there are times where I'm like very delicately like, okay, thrusters down, and I look up and I died. <laughs> yeah, that absolutely <laughs> happens. So uh, has this turned you on to space exploration? Do you see yourself shifting from games journalism into? Uh... It's kind of Brandon. It's kind of fun. It takes place in like it. It seems like it's the '90s because of the way the operating system looks and like the way th they talk about things. Uh, so it kind of takes place in this weird alternate universe where we were in space in the 90s. That sounds fascinating, Kyle. Yeah, that's cool. You're really, you're really giving me the blank looks in this just play, I'll be honest, Kyle. You're, what do you really mean by just that? Kinda, you really just kind of like throw a statement out there and then you're like, I'm, I'm done with that. Do you know what? I'm just scared to be like, I don't know what's happened. I'm scared to be opinionated these days. I just are, you getting some, are you getting some flack? Are you getting some... Some nasty feedback from the fans about being negative? Maybe that's it. Like, you get to a point, you get, you be, you're about to come 30, and you're like, what is my output? What am I giving everyone? <laughs> this display just got deep. <laughs> yep.